Big class, Mrs. Gilling back here again, about to do your unit four video assignment. This one is about your next project, all about the personality profile. And honestly, a lot of students like this project because it gets, uh, it's fun. You can learn about you, your personality, take some fun little personality tests. But before we talk about that, let's do the joke of the unit. This one's a cartoon, a battery talking to his therapist. And he says, I just try to focus on the positive side of things. Because, you know, batteries have two ends, the positive and negative. And he's going for the positive side, guys. And we all should try to be happy, right? Go for the positive side. Is that a good one? Is that one okay? All right. Hey, if you got some jokes and you want to send them to me, some psychology ones, send them to me. And maybe they will make it in the joke of the year. And I would love that, actually. Because sometimes I can't find any more good jokes. So help me out. If you got some good ones, send them my way. All right. Let's learn about your project. Here's the introduction. Background. Personality tests are wildly popular. You may have already taken some. Workplaces use them to evaluate job applicants or to help employees get along. Schools use them to help students explore potential careers. People take them just for fun to see what makes them tick, maybe to discover their strengths and weaknesses or to compare what they know of themselves with what a test results might say. What makes these tests so popular? Do people really need a test to tell them if they are extroverts or introverts, logical or creative? Do these tests have value for psychologists or for the people taking them? These are questions you'll think about in this project. So all about personality tests. Here's the objective. For this project, you will explore your own personality. So you got to learn about you. First, you will reflect on your own personality, thinking about your own experiences, emotions, and behaviors. Then you will complete two different personality assessment tools to compare, contrast, and evaluate the results. You will need to consider the similarities and differences between the tools and the results, as well as the reliability and validity of the different techniques. So here's your steps. I'm going to give you some step by steps and instructions. And this project is all in the course. So you don't have to like write up a separate paper for it. It'll be there'll be text box that you can put the entries in and it'll tell you, hey, put this one here, put this one here. Kind of like with your other projects, you'll submit it all at the end. Even though you can you know, fill out the different boxes, there won't be a submit button until you get to the very end. And then you can review things and then submit it. So step number one, write a personality self-assessment. Think about what you've learned about theories of personality and personality traits. What combination of factors makes a personality? What makes you, you? So you're going to write a paragraph, just one paragraph, you know, three to five sentences in which you first define personality. What is personality? Look through the readings. The workbook gives you a great definition on those. So, so find that definition. Define personality and then describe your personality in as much detail as possible. I want to be able to understand you after you write this, this paragraph. Step number two, using an objective personality tool. So briefly research these common objective personality assessment techniques. So you get a little bit of choice here. You're going to look at the Myers-Briggs type indicator, the Ising's three dimensions of personality, and the Big Five personality test. You're going to choose one of these objective personality assessment techniques to test for yourself. Take an online version of this assessment. So you just go to Google and, and put in you know, Big Five personality test. And there's a whole bunch of links that will pop up. You can pick one and take the test. Then write the name of the test, the link you used, a brief description of what you did and your results. So let me know what test did you take? Where, what link was it from? What did your results say? What did you have to do? So that's your first test you'll take. After you do the objective test, you're going to take a projective personality assessment. So you'll research these common assessment techniques. The first one's the Rorschach test and then the thematic apperception test. You're going to choose one of these projective personality assessment techniques to test for yourself. Take an online version of the test, then write the name of the test, the link you used, a brief description of what you did, and your results. So you're going to do the exact same thing as you did in the last step, but using a different test, using a projective personality assessment. Step four, you're going to compare the two tests. So what made each test you took an objective or projective personality assessment tool? Consider the following questions. One, how did the types of questions differ? Two, how did your results differ? Were they different? Or did you get kind of the same thing on both the tests? Three, which test better reflects your own perception of your personality? Make sure when you write your paragraph that you're answering that question. What made each test you took an objective or projective personality assessment tool? And use those three questions to guide you as you answer those questions. And then step five, the last step, evaluating personality assessment techniques. 
Consider this statement from Cat People, Dog People, Gecko People, an article you read. Asking people to describe their own personalities has limits. Everyone wants to look good. So you're going to think about that, those two sentences there. Asking people to describe their own personalities has limits. Everyone wants to look good. So thinking about those sentences, answer these questions. One, what are some of the limitations of online personality assessment tools? What might be some of the benefits of these tools? So what are good about these tools? What's maybe not so good about these tools? And then answer this question. Do you feel that the objective or projective assessment techniques you researched are valid and reliable? Why or why not? Support your answers. So the important thing here is say whether or not you think they're valid and reliable, but then tell me why. Tell me what it is that, that makes them valid or what is it that doesn't make them valid. Let me know your opinion here. Make sure you're writing complete sentences and that you're double checking your grammar. So you'll be graded on three things. Your, your grammar. Make sure that you know, you're using correct spelling and punctuation. You're writing complete sentences. Don't just write down yes, no, maybe. Just make sure you're using complete sentences because if you were a psychologist writing a paper, right, you'd have to be complete and you'd have to use good grammar so people would take you seriously as the author of it. The completeness, make sure that you address all parts of each prompt. So if I say, is this valid and reliable, yes or no, support your answer. Make sure that you don't just say yes or no, but that you tell me why, that you give me some evidence to support that. And last, accuracy. Are your statements correct? Um, do they line up with, with what you know we've been learning in the course? Is it, is it right? And that's, that's what you'll be graded on. It's, it's actually really fun. I, a lot of students like to take the test and learn a little bit more about them and their personalities. But if you do have any questions at all, please, as always, reach out to me and I'm more than willing to help. But other than that, good luck on your test, on your project, and have fun with it. Thanks, guys.